Please, May. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. This is Justin and Erica from You Are Creators, and we have a special guest, Miss Constance Arnold. Welcome, Constance. Thank you so much, Justin and Erica. I am so grateful and honored to be with the both of you today. Thank you so much. I just want to give our listeners um, just the introduction of, of Miss Arnold. Um, she, I'm just so extremely excited. Um, so she's an author. She's a master trainer, a motivational speaker. She's a licensed therapist, a certified coach. She's a radio host of one of the most popular law of attraction shows, Think, Believe, and Manifest. Um, and on that show, you should really check it out. I mean, she has the best interviews. Um, she interviews some of the um, New, York, New York Times bestsellers. Um, her show streams to um, about, what? what is it, over 120 countries now, right? At least. Yeah, At yeah. Least. This is exciting. She's also, she also has um, more than 20 years experience as a leader in innovative counseling, training, and coaching techniques. Um, she's a recognized authority on psychology, personal and professional development. Miss Arnold is also known for her unique delivery and self-motivation and maximize, maximizing human potential. Um, she's a dynamic speaker and teacher. And she just recently uh, released her ebook on ba Valentine's Day, Attracting and Manifesting Genuine Love. Um, let me just say, uh, she just did an interview, um, I think it was like last week with Dr. Kimbrough, and that interview was awesome. You all have to check out her radio show. Thank you. I hope I can live up to all of this <laughs> saying about me, I tell you. <laughs> yes. Um, so let me just, let me start out and ask you this question. Um, a lot of our listeners are trying to, I guess, wrap their mind around the whole law of attraction and how it works and how to implement the law of attraction into their lives. So can you tell us how you first got introduced to the law of attraction? Well, well really, um, I guess about 15 years ago, I, I began, you know, as a therapist, I'm always looking some, for something for myself because I realized that I needed my own healing. And, um, and, and I had been reading as a man thinking. I knew that God had placed universal laws uh, in the earth on this physical plane and I knew that there was a difference be between the system of success and the system of failure so I began to study that because in my own life I, you know I would make a lot of money and then I wouldn't have any money I would uh, be, you know be really successful in business and then I it, it would slow down and so I was looking for the universal law that I could tap into which is basically as a man thinketh so is he so basically the law of attraction basically says that whatever you think feel and believe uh, over and over again and consistently eventually that is what would be out pictured in your life and so in my own life Erica I was just frustrated that I couldn't be consistent mm -hmm. that I would have money one year and no money the next year and I realized that it was it really boiled down to my core beliefs what I had experienced, what I had heard, what had been spoken over my life that was so deeply rooted in my DNA and in my subconscious that I was unaware that that each day I would get up and that my thinking really created my reality. So basically my search really came out of my own inadequacy and, and I had just uh, I guess uh, after I saw The Secret, I really began to, you know, just study, which I know you guys have been doing because I've been listening to your podcast to kind of find out where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And I fell and broke my ankle. And I was lying in my bed. I had just bought a new house, and it was three levels. And the doctor said, you cannot put any weight on your foot. And I said, God, what am I going to do? I was lying in my bed on the third level, and the spirit said, call Law of Attraction Radio Network. 
and I did. And so basically what I do is I merge spirituality with the psychological, with quantum physics so that people can put it in their lives in a simplistic way on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good. I, you know, mm -hmm. it's when, when I think about the law of attraction, I know um, just Justin and I, we have um, just amazing manifestation stories, but I know with us and I think with some of our listeners as well, we sometimes have a conflict and I think it may be an inner conflict because we don't know, you know, with our religion. And do you think that law of attraction conflicts with religion or do you think think that it adds to it? What do you think? What is, what's your take on that? Well, well hey, it may it, it may conflict with religion, but not with spirituality. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, to me, there's a big difference. And so, you know, I'm a Christian, and so a lot of Christians say, well, you know, uh, you can't believe in the law of attraction. I said, well, can you believe in the law of gravity? Right. Because God is the one who implemented the laws. And so even in the Bible, I mean, the law of attraction, you know, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it or you know whatever you sow that's what you're going to reap or as a man thinketh so is he or the mind of Christ is on the inside of you and so really t to me Justin and Erica it's really one mm -hmm. uh, and, and people have separated and I think that because of fear and because of uh of religion, I think there's a big a difference between religion, religion and spirituality. I, I feel that religion puts people in bondage, but spirituality frees people. Yes, absolutely. Yes. absolutely. You know, I you know I think that's that is excellent because I know a lot of people are really confused. Um, you know, with the difference between religion and spirituality. And I think with religion, you spoke about people being in bondage. Just, this puts people into a box. And so what I think what okay. happens is they have, um, they have this inner conflict. And because they have this inner conflict, it's like they're not, they don't have enough to put everything that they know or everything that they can into the law of attraction and really um, understand and really be able to use it for their daily lives because they're conflicted, conflicted inside. Yeah. And there's mixture. Yeah. There's mixture and, and there is not a solid concentration. And so if at the core of your being or if at the core of your subconscious, you believe that that money is the root of all evil, but then you're saying with your mouth, I want to be wealthy because the two are not aligned. It may take that person longer because really whatever is happening in your outside world is an exact replica of what you truly believe. Absolutely. What you truly believe. And so uh, if there's mixture there, uh, you know, if, if there's a lot of doubt and unbelief there because of our childhood experiences, because of those, those darn core beliefs, you know, and, and because that subconscious is so powerful, you know, the subconscious will always win out, you know. And so in my own life, and you know, Erica, personally, I was saying I want to be abundant. I, I have wealth now, but at the core of me, deep in the recesses of my DNA, there was a, a, a feeling of inadequacy, not good enough. That can never happen to you. That has never happened to anyone in your own family and guess what until I reprogram that DNA and those core beliefs even though consciously I wanted wealth it never manifested because the mixture was too great right okay wow Constance. that is fantastic um what made you start a radio show Constance well, you know, I've, I've always been a speaker, uh, you know, I've traveled all over the world speaking and, and my gift is communication. My brothers told me that even when we were younger, I used to take them in the backyard of my my parents home and teach them. So I've always been a teacher, a communicator. That's my dominant gift. And like I said, after I fell and broke my ankle, uh, you know, you know, sometimes we see the 
uh, see things that, that are happening to us is really bad, but really me breaking my ankle was catapulted me to re reframe my thinking. And so I called and I knew uh, my thinking was that I wanted to bridge spirituality. I called the Law of Attraction Radio Network and I went on just to serve. Wow. I don't go. I have millions of listeners now, but that was not my intention. My intention was to serve people, serve people every week with a quality show that they could really take and implement into their everyday lives and begin to shift and change their inside. So I started every week, and I had a cast on my foot uh, just in the first time, and I would slide my little self down the steps and and record and put, prop my foot up and little did I know five years later it's, 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 it's been the most amazing journey and that's why I say to people when you go in like the two of you are doing I've, I've, I've been looking at you you know and listening to you and when you go in to serve I tell you money and success will uh, it's a part of serving Yes, Constance. Thank you so much. You are so yeah. awesome. <laughs> really, you are. Um, me, personally, I'm a student of this, and I yeah. enjoy hearing you speak. You know, I'm listening you. to you, you know, and um, what are some tips people can use to change their core beliefs from negative to positive? Wow. <laughs> People ask me, if, 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 what would be the one thing that I would say to people? It would be to identify and change your core beliefs. And everybody is different and everybody has a, a different pathway. But I would say the first thing would be to identify them. And how can you identify them? Take a look at your life and look at the patterns in your life. Do you always choose relationships where men don't commit to you? Okay, that's a pattern. Do you always start a project and then stop it? That's a pattern because your core beliefs uh, create behaviors and or patterns. So identify what they are and then examine that and say, is that the truth or a lie? Is it true that I always have to choose men who do not commit to me? So I think you need to examine what the core beliefs are and then change them. Okay, and so I say the three core beliefs that most people have is I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough and a, and a sense of uh, unworthy or being undeserving. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so you identify what they are and then you replace them with a new truth. You know, that I can do all things, that I am smart, that, that uh, I can have a successful business or I can attract love. And when you first start saying and believing those things, your mind is going to say, how are you going to do that? You know, but, but so people do it different ways. You, I believe that you can do it through meditation. Um, and I, th I, I think you have to know yourself to find out what works for you. Meditating on the new truth about yourself, that I am beautiful, that I am worthy of love, that I do have the mind of Christ on the inside of me to create a, a new business. You can do it by affirmations because every word that you speak has a vibration yes. and it goes right into the universe and it, 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 it creates exactly uh, what you say and even in um, I think it's Hebrews 11 it said that God framed the world with his words mm -hmm. and if we're gods in the earth and you are a God then you frame your world with, with your words whatever you continually say and believe is what will happen for you and even in Proverbs it says you are snared by the words of your mouth mm -hmm. that means that you hold yourself back you stop yourself so affirmations, um, and I and I feel also the visualization. Now visualization for me, uh, Eric and Justin, is the last thing because I have to write it out, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to come to writing. But once I write out in detail the new truth about myself, then I can visualize it. 
And then lastly, writing. A lot of people love journaling. Like I said, it all depends on your personality and the way you are made. So write out, I am, I am beautiful. I deserve love. Love is coming into my life now. And so it's scripting, uh, it's, it's, it's affirmations, of, it's visualization, and it's meditate. And meditate means to roll over and over again in your mind, you know, that new truth until it penetrates your subconscious and it shifts and changes the, those paradigms. And we all know that a paradigm is just a whole lot of core beliefs about something. And until you shift that paradigm, things will stay, stay the same for you because subconsciously you don't believe it mm -hmm. right subconsciously right and so don't and i i think that there's no bad answer for people i think according to your personality according to the way you may start with one of these techniques uh you know every day i speak out loud what i want because speaking out loud since communication is my gift that i feel that that's very effective for me beautiful beautiful Mm -hmm. We know Constance. Um, I read a lot. Okay, I read a lot of books, and mm -hmm. for some reason, every book is saying the same thing. Right. They're saying that the power of I am is the most creative force in the universe. Saying I am, you know, I guess like wealthy or ha you know, or happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. What is the power of I am? No, you know, oh my God. You, you know, because when you say I am, everything that comes after that, you're really creating that with your words. Right. And so, and the interesting thing, uh, Justin and Erica, is that when you're saying I am, I am is in the faith realm, I am is in the nowness realm, and we know that there's no such thing as time. And so every time you say I am, whatever you attach after I am, you're creating that. And so really, once again, that's really God giving us the power to create what we desire. For example, you know, I am becoming more and more um, healthy and wealthy every day, you know, or you can say, you know, I am so tired. Mm -hmm. You know, a great example of that would be many years ago, I, I traveled extensively and I would leave on a Sunday, come back on a Friday and throw my suitcase and repack it. And I used to say, oh my God, you know, being on the road is so difficult. I am so tired. And so one day the spirit just said to me, okay, you keep saying I am so tired, you're creating that. So I, so I think it's the creative power that's on the inside of us that we can take in this now moment. And anytime you're in now, you're in faith. Because that's what faith is. Faith is not in the future. Hope is in the future. Uh, hope says I, I'm, I'm hoping to get some money. But faith says I have it now. So when you in that I am moment, see God always talks in the I. God never says I'm going to be. God says I am that I am. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so, so now everyone who's listening to this can say, you know, I am increasing in my wisdom about how to start my new business. I am becoming a better husband. I am becoming a better mother. And when you say that, all the power of the universe conspires. Your good will come and, and take solid uh, form in your life when you speak and you live in that I amness. It's a powerful tool that anybody can use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you spoke about um, personality and the way that our personality really um, affects the way we learn and not only the way we learn but the way that we the techniques that we use in the law of attraction and i think that was really good because i never really heard anyone um really you know put personality personality into it um and i know like for justin he reads a lot and he he verbalizes a lot for me i like to write a lot i like to write it down and visualize it and he does the same but i'm not really i don't really verbalize as much so what are some tips that you use that you can share with our listeners that they could possibly use that you um, begin your day with? 
Uh, okay. Well, you know, I believe that you create your day. Mm -hmm. That you create your day. And, and I think you have to know yourself. I just want to comment on what you just said, the difference between you and Justin. And I would say, I would tell you to continue to journal and write and visualize because that's what resonates with you and that's the way God made you. Mm -hmm. And, and so I believe that you create your day when you when you put your feet on the floor, you make a decision. I win. And so I this is how I create my day. The first thing I do is I don't check my iPad, which is really difficult. You guys don't check my iPad or my cell phone or anything else. The first thing I do is I have my quiet time or my spiritual time, etc. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's from that place that power is. And Russell Simmons, who's the, the powerful uh, hip-hop mogul, said that there is profit in stillness. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and money and prosperity is in stillness. So that's the first thing that I do. And, and, um, and then after that, I prioritize my day. I decide what do I want to do. And let me go back. In that, in that quiet time, I affirm. I speak out loud. I have my affirmations. I do my visualization at night because that's just what works for me. Mm -hmm. and, and I call my day in. I say, this is going to be a great day. Uh, I call my clients in with my words. I call in my clients. I say, God, I thank you that I have clients that come to me from uh, the seven continents of the world, that come to me from the northwest, east, and south. And I'm very specific about them. These are clients who desire my services now and who are ready to pay now and understand the power of investment. So so I do that. And uh, I'm very careful about who I let come into my day, Justin and Erica, mm -hmm. because associations are, are really key. And, and normally I have a fun time or a fun hour for two or three hours every day with a friend or with an, an associate. I go about my day. And then uh, at the end of the day, I, I, I write out a gratitude list and I visualize maybe one thing that I'm really desiring, living my life from the end, acting like, feeling like, knowing that I have it now. And of course, you can start with start with something small, like some hot dogs, right, Justin? I listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, I I've been, and, and so and so really, when I go to bed and I look back on my day, I created that day. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the power to create our own days. You can you can really determine, you decide, you create your own reality. And does that mean that I don't have any challenges during the day? No, it doesn't mean that. But I've already made up my mind prior to that all wisdom is downloaded to me. All knowledge that I need about my business and my clients is downloaded to me. So I walk that out during the course of the day. Right. Beautiful. Right. So we talk about the law of attraction a lot. Um, so can you share with us some other universal laws and maybe how we can use them to benefit our lives as well? Okay. Uh, okay. I would say the, the law of serving. We talked about that earlier. You know, the law of giving and receiving. Whatever you want, you need to give. I don't like the word want. Whatever you desire, you need to give. So if you desire love, then you give love. If you desire money, then you give that. If you did, if you desire more, you know, then you give that. Or the law of receiving. Mm -hmm. There's a law of receiving. You know, a lot of people are great givers, but they don't know how to receive. Uh, I said that it's a two-sided coin, and you know, um, Einstein said that everything goes in circles. Mm -hmm. The whole boomerang effect. So you know, you know, whatever you give, that's 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 what you're going to get back. Or the law of mental equivalence, and that just simply means that a, a mental equivalent means whatever you embrace, whatever you whatever you embody. That means that that intention or that goal is just a part of you. You know how the athletes now, they, they've already seen themselves winning the gold medal prior to them even so they embodied that first. So the law of mental equivalence said that whatever you embody, you know, whatever you believe, you know, is, is what will come back to you. Right. Wow. 
Wow. So, um, just to you had you had a book that you just released last right. week, the ebook, um, and you the name of that book was Attracting and Manifesting Genuine Love. Um, so Justin and I we get a lot of emails and it whether it be family members or a spouse or just a relationship, can you give us um, some advice or give our listeners some advice or tips on how to deal with negative relationships or unhealthy relationships? Wow. And I say that, um, you know, that's, that's difficult for all of us. And for someone who's single, I, I want to say you attract who you are, not what you want. Mm. So whatever you whatever you want, you need to already be that. Wow. So so if you want health, if you want a healthy man, you need to be healthy because remember vibrationally, in order to be a match of attracting that, you need to be that. I would say take a look at who's in your life and realize, you know, that people as many times are in your life for a season and as you expand, as your consciousness change, your friends would change and you have to allow people to leave your life. You have to allow people, you know, because you're not on the same level. Sometimes you're on level 22 and that person is on level 5 and you're trying to go back and get them when your consciousness has been elevated. You know, and, and I guess a third thing would be is that the only person that you can change is yourself. And, and so if you're in a difficult or a negative relationship, take a look at yourself and see what can you change. How can you shift and change your perspective? How can you shift and change your perspective about the other person and then make a decision as to whether or not that that relationship still serves you? Mm-hmm. And and it, and, and I, I think I heard T.D. Jakes say this, that if you are the smartest person in the group, you, you need to get a higher. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I believe that you should always have people in your life higher than you are. Mm-hmm smarter than you who you than you are who's been there done that and got a t-shirt right. and, and so and I think a lot of times it's codependency and dysfunctionalism that we stay in a lot of negative relationships that drain us uh, that doesn't serve you mm-hmm. you know and I tell a lot of my people I said well what you need to do is if that same person calls you every day that's why God gave you caller ID you don't answer your phone <laughs> <laughs> or you tell them, you know, you guys need to get counseling or coaching. And so even our relationships are a reflection of, of, of how we see ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and so when you got family members, you can choose how much time you spend with them. If mama's a little negative, we love mama, but mama, we're not going to be coming up to your house every Sunday right. to, to, to that. So that's what I would say to that. <laughs> Awesome, Constance. Well, you know, um, thank you so much for being on You Are Creators podcast. Thank you. Thank you. You gave us such wonderful advice. Um, you too. You too. I just want to say how proud I am of the both of you. You're so wonderful. You're doing great work. And I, if there's anything I can do to serve you, please contact me. And I just see big things and big <laughs> success for you too. I tell you, I thank just you love so you both. Much. Thank it's you so much. Thank you so much. Sir. Well, um, this is Justin and Erica from You Are Creators, and we support your dreams.